live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Off the back of a historically dry summer, the heavens have opened, dropping some much needed rain across the state. It's welcome relief for Tasmanian farmers, but the overnight deluge is doing little to ease drought concerns. A 25 millimetre dumping is music to the ears of farmer Ben Grubb, bringing some desperately needed rainfall to his dry pastures. Certainly it's taken the worry out of things as we come in into uh, winter. We had just a nice, really steady rain uh, without any heavy downpours. A low pressure system sweeping large parts of the state overnight. The northwest copping the brunt of the deluge with some regions recording up to 70 mils. Elsewhere across the north, broadly 20 to 40 millimetres of rain fell on the ground and elsewhere in the state, including Hobart in the south, around 20 millimetres. The downpour, a welcome reprieve after a historically dry spell. Many places in Tasmania saw uh, more rain in a, about a six hour period than they saw all of February and March combined. The autumn falls have farmers breathing a sigh of relief, but there's still a long way to go before concerns are eased after battling some of the driest and toughest conditions in recent memory. As farmers, we're trained to prepare for droughts, um, but this has certainly been one out of the box. Farmers are feeling quite tired and worn out. Um, periods of drought like we've gone through are in, incredibly draining. Now turning their hopes to the skies for the weeks ahead. The rain is welcome, um, but it needs to be followed up by more rain to really have a, a long-lasting impact. Praying for another perfectly timed downpour. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's new parliament will become a lot clearer over the coming week as the final votes are sorted. For more, we're joined by reporter Ruby Cance. And Ruby, what do the next few days look like? Kim, the votes are in. All that's left is to find out who they've elected. Now, today, the deadline for postal votes, meaning the Tasmanian Electoral Commission can finalise the tallies and distribute voter preferences. That will start this evening and could take up to a week due to far more candidates and seven seats in each electorate. At the moment, it seems the government will get at least 13, Labor 10, the Greens 4, Jackie Lambie 2 and two independents, leaving four seats undecided. The Hare Clark counting system does have a habit of throwing up some quirky results and in a hung parliament one or two seats either way could dramatically change the political landscape kim it certainly could thank you very much there ruby well an 18 year old man is set to face arson charges in the hobart magistrates court tomorrow he's accused of causing three hundred thousand dollars worth of fire damage to a unit in glenorchy yesterday thankfully the blaze was able to be contained before it spread to nearby units no injuries have been reported a defence member has been airlifted to hospital after he was injured in a military training exercise 200 kilometres north of King Island. Two aircraft were sent to rescue the man from naval ship HMAS Sycamore. It's understood the man was in the water scuba diving at the time. He's now in a stable condition. It has been a sleepless couple of nights for Scott Roth as celebrations continue following the Jack Jumpers Maiden MBL Championship. Tonight, the coach reflects on the historic win, revealing work is already well underway preparing for next year. This isn't Scott Roth's first NBL championship. That was the Wildcats in 2020. But still proudly clutching the trophy, the Tasmanian win means so much more. This is the best thing that's happened to me in my life, to be quite honest with you. you know, the first one was obviously the birth of my child, but this is something that will be a legacy, hopefully. They mightn't be here without Jack McVeigh's miracle in Melbourne. At the time, the coach wasn't getting ahead of himself. Well, it's just another shot. Now the series is locked away. It probably is one of the greatest shots ever that I've ever seen to actually um, catapult us into this position that we're in today with this trophy in our hands. And that's sports, and that's the beauty of sports. Roth raised a few eyebrows, sending assistant coach Jack Fleming into the huddle during a crucial timeout on Sunday, a responsibility that was afforded to him as an assistant in the NBA. I diagrammed all the endgame plays uh, for the Golden State Warriors with Don Nelson. He allowed me to be in the huddle for the last minute, two minutes of the game and handle everything that happened at the end of the game. I thought Jack Fleming was ready to step into that role. With a different player high scoring almost every week, the Jackies draw strength from their depth. Roth's had plenty of proud dad moments this year, watching the likes of Will Magnay, Sean McDonald and Majuk Dane grab attention in crucial moments. But talks with potential new signings are already well progressed. 
Bringing former devil Darren Smith and five-time NBL champion Mika Vakona on board has helped with that. We're quite a ways down the road with free agency and uh, we're in a good spot. Before heading back to the US for a break, Roth will tour the trophy around the state. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian hospital has come up with a way to increase nurse recruitment at its facility, offering a fast-tracked program to get nurses into wards while teaching essential clinical skills. For nurse Bella Un, a surgical ward is the career jump she needed after working in a Sydney aged care centre. I kind of like wanted to step out from the comfort zone and build up my um, practical skill in the hospital. She's the first of 20 students participating in the entry to acute care program at Calvary Hospital, allowing aged care and other nurses to be able to work in a hospital setting. We rapidly upskill them in a six week program which includes a clinical nurse facilitator working full time with them on the ward. The program's the first of its kind in Tasmania and it's seeing strong demand, with several more nurses coming on board soon. There was a lot of nurses from the subacute care background that wanted to apply, so we developed the program to help them gain the skills to be able to work in the acute care setting. It's also helping relieve staffing pressures, teaching essential nursing procedures and clinical skills needed on the wards. They have a patient load on the ward, but they do start with a reduced patient load and then that's so that they can consolidate their skills and knowledge. While for Bella, she's since been named the ward staff member of the year after just 12 months on the job. If you feel like you want to learn a bit more and explore more experiences relevant to your practical and uh, hospital setting, I would suggest you to come and apply. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. It's been a dream start to the TSL season for Clarence, downing Lauderdale in their Good Friday clash. Tyson Hanslow making a triumphant return, kicking two goals for the Roos after six months off with a broken ankle. The atmosphere in the change rooms after the game was, yeah, it's, you can't really describe it, but um, like it's never an easy task coming up against Lauderdale, especially down at the tip. Clarence has the bye this weekend, facing Launceston in round three. Reigning SFL Premier's Signet will be drawing on their 36-point grand final win for inspiration when they kick off the new season on Friday. The skipper feeling confident while facing off with round one opponent. New you know, we've had a really strong core season. group of about 20, 25 people who are an option to play seniors already in round one. So I think the boys, uh, we're excited, we're fit. It's a new look team for Kimbra's women this year who've gone on a signing spree. Um, we've got Perry King coming down from VFL who was previously playing AFLW. We've also got Molly Mitchell from the Glenorchy Football Club. They've already secured their comeuppance for last season's narrow grand final loss, flipping the ledger on North Hobart in their season opener 31-4. Northwest graduates are looking to double up on a double championship year after claiming both the men's and women's hockey Premier League titles. The new season kicks off this week and players are raring to hit the field. 2023 delivered a double delight for the Northwest grads. It's pretty cool, but we're obviously not focused on that this year. We're focused on going again and getting another premiership. The men's and women's champions enter the 2024 Premier League season as the teams to beat. The men are bringing a new game plan to take things to the next level. A combination of things, we're trying something different, um, but then also um, things that worked well last year, so just building year on year, and um, I think that new formation will come, come good in, in September. Look really excited to get the Premier League up and running again, and our competitions um, as, as a whole um, back up and running. The season kicks off this weekend, with clubs across the league believing they can win. Some big incoming players have OHA women feeling confident. I think all the girls are pretty confident and with a few returning players um, we've definitely got the team that can do it. There's fresh turf at the Tasmanian Hockey Centre. Administrators say it's not the quality of facilities but the quantity that's holding them back targeting growth in school-aged players. Look, the beauty of our sport is we've got seven to 80-year-olds playing our sport. It's a really nice thing about our sport that we have cross-generational players. Fans of all ages will be watching when the first matches get underway on Thursday night. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News.
Good evening. Hobart 17, just three degrees warmer than the overnight low today. Launceston 19, Devonport and St Helens our top with 21 and Burnley 20. Below average temperatures with Flinders Island and Low Head reaching 19, King Island 18, Friendly Beaches and Strawn 17 degrees. And for the rain, 87 millimetres fell to 9am at Western Creek in the Meander Valley and between 9 and 4 today, the top fall 18 millimetres at Zeehan under all that cloud. As well as the cloud over us, there is cloud containing thunderstorms over the top end extending through to New South Wales linked to a trough. Onshore flow has cloud over southern WA and South Australia. Tomorrow a trough lies over Queensland and the WA coast. A high extends a ridge over the bite. The winds southwesterly at 15 to 25 knots reaching up to 35 knots over the southeast. Strong wind warning for waters from Stanley around to Low Rocky Point and a sheep graziers alert also on for the southeast. And with those cooler south westerlies, look at these temperatures down to 15 for Hobart, 14 for Geefton, 13 for Bothwell, all cloudy. Launceston a high of 17, a sunny day, partly cloudy for Devonport with 17 as well and 16 the top for Cressy. Burnie 15 degrees and partly cloudy, maybe a shower for Strawn, 14 the top and 16 for Curry. And for St Helens, 15 the high, partly cloudy for Swansea, 16 and 15 for Orford. On Thursday, light winds and fine apart from light showers over the west. Fine, partly cloudy conditions expected on Friday. And most temperatures sneaking back into the 20s on Saturday, but a few showers over the north and northeast. Sunny and 31 in Perth. 10 degrees cooler in Adelaide, along with a shower there. A cool, showery day in Melbourne as well. Sunny for Canberra, but showers for Sydney and Brisbane. Cool and cloudy in Hobart, it's 13, 16 right now in Launceston, Devonport mostly cloudy and 17 degrees. Kim, I hope you had a great Easter break. I know I should have been at John Kane Arena in uh, Melbourne over the weekend rather than the MCG. And thanks for wearing that Richmond gear to just remind me. Good on you. <laughs> Donna told me to. And that is all your news for now. We'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.